It was the cracking of the human genome that really put the final nail in the coffin of this dichotomy between biology, genetics, and experience. Because um, genetic expression, the actual functioning of the genes as they make their proteins, uh, does not take place um, in a vacuum out of context. So gene expression is influenced by the environment. It's influenced by experience. This very long-standing scientific debate of uh, nature versus nurture is a, kind of, from a science perspective, kind of a dead issue. It's resolved. There's, there's no such thing as nature without nurture or nurture without nature. The development of, of, ability, of human ability represents a complex interplay, but you could say, between your, your inherited resources and, and, and environmental influences. We have now clearly demonstrated that brain architecture is shaped by experience, not just driven by a kind of hardwired genetic template. That is, a lot of the information that goes into building brains is not actually there in the genes. It's sort of cooked up or whipped up on the fly as brains develop. The brain and its function and our development is, is reliant on both. And, and, and it's not just an additive phenomenon. They affect each other. The environment affects the biology of the brain. And the biology of the brain affects the way each individual deals with the environment. Your ability absolutely springs out of, you could say, the self-organization of your capacities as a product of your environment, given your inherited resources. There's been a sort of religion in, on one frame that we're sort of stuck with our inherited resources, right? And to some extent, of course, we are. It, re it represents a source of limits to every one of us, every living human creature uh, in every in individual human being. But at the same time, we have a tremendous capacity to modulate the outcomes of, of that, this, of our, our, given our inherited resources, as a function of our individual experiences. Our brains really are experience-dependent learning machines, if you want to call it that. Um, we need our environment to stimulate the um, anatomical and physiological properties of the brains that we were born with. Without the environmental input, um, there's very little that's going to happen for us uh, as humans. So when we talk about learning and we talk about problems in learning, uh, I think it's reasonable to ask, well, what are the, what are the contributions here from the biological side? Uh, you know, how much of, of this different way of learning or this difficulty in learning is related to um, a brain that's working differently? And how much of it is related to the environment and the degree to which the environment is supporting or not supporting learning? But we have to remember that the environment is influencing the development of the brain. Um, so if the environment is not supportive of learning, it's not just the environment out there, but that non-supportive environment has probably had some influence on the way the brain is developed.